Hello everyone! In this video, I will walk you through the steps of trimming a basic cylinder on the potter's wheel. You can visit my website, stephaniemwilhelm.com, or follow me on Instagram, at stephanie.m.wilhelm, to see my work, more educational resources, and techniques. You will find another video where I teach how to throw a basic cylinder on the wheel. And in that video, I review my studio setup as well as materials. Okay, let's get started. The first step when preparing to trim is to check the dryness of your clay and familiarize yourself with the thickness and the bottom. The clay should be leather hard, not sticky to the touch, and the rim should be strong enough that it does not wiggle. In order to trim your cylinder, you first must center it. This is the same idea as how we center the clay when throwing. One technique to center, which takes some practice, is called tap centering. To do this, you will rest your hand against the pot and tap it towards the other side each time it nudges your hand. Bit by bit, it will eventually center on the wheel. A technique that I teach when students are beginning is creating a mark that helps guide you to center the cylinder. To do this, hold a pencil, needle tool, or wooden tool in front of your body so that it just barely touches the foot of the cylinder as it spins. Your hand should keep the tool steady and you slowly move the tool inwards until it creates a mark. Once it begins to mark the piece, do not continue to push inwards. You will notice that one side will have a mark to it from the tool. This mark tells us that that side of the piece is too close to your body, causing it to be uncentered. Stop your wheel and line up the mark in front of you. Do not turn the pot, instead turn the wheel head. Then give the piece a small nudge away from your body. It is best to do small pushes forward over time versus large pushes that may cause you just to go back and forth between center. You can also carefully erase each mark so you can keep track of which is more accurate. In time, you should have a fairly even mark created around your piece. This means it's centered. Now you will need to attach the piece to the wheel so that you can trim it. Roll three small pieces of clay into a ball and holding it with your thumb and pointer finger, push down on the wheel head. This will create an edge that you can slide into and slightly under the rim of your pot. Make sure you hold your piece down with one hand when doing this, otherwise it will push your cylinder off center. Once the clay ball is pushed into the rim, I like to squeeze the two sides of the ball to make sure it is well attached. Avoid pinching too much and making the clay ball too thin. You should always work on the diameter of your pot first, as this will change depending on the thickness of your bottom wall and how much clay you plan to remove. You can choose from many tools. I like to start with something wider to remove a larger area of clay. You will notice I am using my left hand to help hold the pot and my left thumb to support my right hand with the tool. Similar to when throwing, the more you can support and steady your hands, the better the form will be. The clay should trim away like smooth pieces of spaghetti. If the clay sticks, then that means it's too wet. And if it comes off more like chocolate shavings and makes a scratching sound, then that means it is too dry. You should only trim where necessary. The more efficient you throw the wall, the less trimming you will need to do. Remember to keep your wheel speed steady and even. You'll notice that I rarely ever stop my wheel unless I need to. And don't worry about those clay trimmings as they gather on your wheel head. Once you have trimmed away the proper amount of clay from your wall, you're ready to move to the foot of your pot. I like to take a larger tool to remove any lumps and bumps and smooth the surface first. You may notice that you will move back and forth between the bottom and the wall as it changes the form and moves the clay. One trick if you are not certain of the thickness of your floor is to tap with your finger and listen to the sound. You can also compare the sound of the bottom and the wall of your cylinder to have a better idea of how even the thickness may be. 
sometimes I will push very gently in the center of my floor just to make sure that it isn't getting too thin. There are many different styles of feet you can create on each piece. I am making a small mark on the side first to guide me, then removing the clay. To even the surface without marks from your tool, gradually release your pressure on the tool so that the trimming blends into the form. Now I will begin to create the foot ring. I start with a smaller tool and create a mark to act as a guideline for me in the foot ring. Then I will remove the clay from inside that guideline that I created in the foot. Move from the inside outwards or the outside inwards. It is important to pause for a moment in the center so not to create a bump in your foot. You can judge the speed of your tool with the speed of the wheel by the rings you make in the clay. At this moment, you do not want to create a spiral design, but instead you want to be able to remove the clay, creating a nice, even thickness. Continue to trim away the clay until you are happy with the way that your foot looks visually, but also with the thinness of the clay. And you may want to switch back and forth between the different tools that you use. Some might do a better job at trimming a larger part of the surface, and some might work better for small details or cleaning the edges and rounding the form. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Let's pretend for a moment that you accidentally trim into your foot ring. In order to fix this, you will want to move into the mark from above, not from the side. Otherwise, you can continue to be pulled into that mark. Slowly trim away from the top until the mark that you created disappears. Then you can move into the side gently to clean up the mark made there too. You will most likely need to move back and forth between the top and the side to clean up and fix the form. This may take some time but just keep your hand steady and move slowly. As you trim the foot, you will notice that the edges will have a visible sharpness. The clay may be soft now, but once fired, this can be sharp to the touch and fragile and prone to breaking. Take your trimming tool and try to create a bevel or rounded edge. This will soften the form and help to avoid your pot from scratching any table surfaces or chipping easily. Once you are pleased with your form and the foot, 
you will need to smooth the surface with water and your fingers. When we trim, we alter the surface and remove the thin skin of slip created when throwing. This can affect how the clay feels and how the glaze adheres to the piece. So we want to try to return that soft surface with a bit of water. If you are using a very groggy clay, try to avoid a sponge. Once I've applied some water to the surface, I use my fingers or a rubber rib to smooth it and return the surface of my pot to what it was like after being thrown. You've just finished trimming. So to remove the pot from the wheel head, simply take away the small balls of clay. If one sticks too much, you can gently lift the pot up with your hands and either the clay will stay attached to the wheel head or it will move with the piece making it easy to take off. I like to clean the rim of my piece and make sure it is smooth and round. I always double check the thickness of my piece as well after trimming, just to make sure it needs no further work. If you would like to sign your work, once it has dried to the touch, you can use a pencil to make the perfect mark in the clay. I avoid using a needle tool. These can be too thin and too sharp that they create a mark that may be difficult to see. You will notice little pieces of clay will gather around your signature. Do not try to remove these when the clay is wet, as they will just smudge. Instead, once the clay is dry, you can take a green Brillo pad and easily brush them away for a smooth and clean signature. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful as you improve your skills on the potter's wheel. Be kind to yourself as you are learning, and be sure to try new things. There are so many techniques and processes out there and as you practice, you will find the ones that are best for you. To see more of my videos and educational resources, be sure to visit my website, stephaniemwilhelm.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at stephanie.m.wilhelm. Feel free to contact me with any questions you may have and share these videos with your friends and especially any other educators in ceramics. Thanks so much.